When you hear sex trafficking, what do you guys think of? Sex trafficking? Um, people having sex in the traffic. No. Um, skinny women. I don't know. It's awful. Uh, women being sold for sex. When you hear sex trafficking, what do you think about? I think about us in the Bahamas. <laughs> They're like selling like little Asian girls, uh, little Indian Asian. girls. Okay, okay, like little girls. Like, why would an old man want to like have sex with like a little yeah. girl? So, what country do you think of? Uh, probably like the Middle East. Like, um, yeah. India, India, like Japan, the little poor Japanese girls and stuff. Yeah, some, some yeah. yeah. Like really poor, poor countries. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, what do you think is the difference between um, prostitution and a woman that is being sex trafficked? Prostitution, or sex trafficking is against their will. They, prostitution is willing, I guess. So, do they choose to be a prostitute? For the most part, probably. Trafficking, they're forced to do it without keeping any of the money. And prostitution is working under one person, which is a pimp. Um, I guess prostitution, you're selling your body, and sex trafficking, you're selling you. You're selling you? Yeah, like other people are selling you. What we hear about is kind of this dividing line between a sex trafficking victim and a woman in prostitution. And we say, the woman in prostitution made a choice, the sex trafficking victim didn't have a choice. When you ask the woman who we would peg as just being in prostitution, how did you get there? Like, what led you to that? You found there really weren't choices to her. Developing more of a compassion for that person we might drive by on the street corner and say, eh, she's just a prostitute, but say, oh no, like, I wonder what her story is. I wonder what led her to be where she is. And my name is Jeff Shaw, and I'm the director of Out of Darkness, which is the anti-trafficking ministry of the Atlanta Dream Center. So as the director, I oversee all of our staff. I oversee all of our outreaches. I oversee our rescue and hotline program and I oversee Mel, who's the director of our residential services. The mission of Out of Darkness is to reach, rescue, and restore all victims of commercial sexual exploitation. So that could be the pornography industry, strip clubs, prostitution, sex trafficking. I know something that we're passionate about as an organization, just as a team, is talking more openly about the issues of pornography and the issues of family brokenness. You know, the things that make these girls vulnerable at a young age, the most common factor with the women that we serve is prior sexual abuse that happened before the prostitution and trafficking started. They kind of stole away their sense of having control over their own bodies and their sexuality being vulnerable that, or being precious. That was taken away from them. However, she might struggle with, we are there to help her processing it and just trusting that we are there for her good. So love is the number one thing. And it's important to know that the average age in the US that a girl gets lured into forced prostitution or trafficking is 11 to 14. So one of the biggest vulnerabilities that these guys exploit is youth. Um, so girls who have low self-esteem, girls who have a dysfunctional home life, um, girls who are involved in drugs, um, girls who are running away from abuse. Um, the statistic is that roughly one third of runaway girls are approached by a trafficker within the first 48 hours of running away. So what that indicates to us is these guys know where to look for the girls. So bus stations like Greyhound, where you can get on a bus from any city and come in pretty cheap into a new city, um, they'll recruit girls from there, they'll hang out hey, um, are you new to town? Do you need a ride somewhere? Do you need a place to stay? And they'll tell the girls, you know, it's really dangerous out here. Like you shouldn't be out here alone. So they'll actually 
acknowledge the risk to her, but then offer a solution to it. Um, a lot of the guys will take their time to woo the girl, so they might date her for weeks or months. Musical world, media, um, let alone just the objectification of women, whether it be magazine covers or the way that women are talked about. I mean, it's just, yes. Social media is a huge tool being used right now. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They'll, they'll strike up an online relationship until they can meet up with the girl. If she's having problems with her parents, then she'll talk to him, you know. Um, my, my mom won't let me go out with my friends this weekend. I'm so frustrated. She always is so controlling. She doesn't trust me. And then he might say, oh baby, like you're so mature for your age. And just start to put a wedge in there and be the one that she's confiding in. And then maybe at some point says, why don't you leave tonight? I'll come pick you up out front of your house and you can leave with me and get away from your parents. Um, there's fraud where it's been deception about relationship or a promise. Things will get better once we make enough money. I'll marry you, and we'll we'll get a, a good life. We'll get you know we'll get clean, and we'll get a place together. We'll raise children together, and that hope and that promise keeps her there. Or it could be coercion where there's a threat of I know where your family is, I know where your children are, and if you don't do what I'm asking you to do, I'll make them do it or I'll hurt them in some way. And so even though you see her there and you think, oh, she could just run away, there's layers of mental bondage and emotional bondage that may be keeping her there. Like if you drive past a woman standing on the corner, um, you're gonna think, well, she must be there by choice because if she wasn't, she could just leave because you don't see the pimp standing there with a gun. You don't see her you know, tied up to anything, but the, the layers of bondage are unseen. So it's the fear of what will happen. It's the manipulation, the brainwashing, the trauma bonding that's happened where there's actually even a sense of love or loyalty to the abuser. I will say, the lack of love in the home. If there is no love at home, any child, any child will be vulnerable to what the world is offering them. One thing that every woman that I got to interact with is, is really in a search for, it's for love. When women are just objects and when there's so much emphasis now on not being satisfied with what relationship, you know, with a loving relationship, with what a sexual relationship is supposed to be. It's not just about the way we see women, it's also the way we view relationships and we view um, love. You know, I think it's just been really distorted. And um, yeah, I think that's something to talk about is in our families, in our schools, you know, and at every level of our society and culture. So you have the women who work the street corners, the truck stops, the hotels. Then you have women who are just um, being prostituted or trafficked online. So their ads are being put up and the buyers are coming to them. Um, some women that are in like forced brothel situations where they're being kept behind closed doors, then those traffickers will actually go bring the clients to those locations so that the women are really never seen or outside. The buyers cross every socioeconomic, ethnic, educational background. Doctors, lawyers, business owners, married men, grandfathers, single men, college students, white, black, Asian. I mean, the, the demographic that creates the demand that's buying sex really is everybody. It could be your next door neighbor. Over 40% of the demand for purchasing sex in Atlanta was coming from north of the perimeter, so north of 285, so you're talking about the suburbs. An unstable home will cause a child to be a victim of human trafficking. 
But if you have a parent who loved it, it money is not really the problem because you have a lot of low class kids out there that their parents truly love but are protecting. It's hard to define a normal day because every day can be very different. So um, as it starts to get dark, maybe they're putting on their makeup, putting on their outfit, their heels. So the first thing to do is get to them where they are to let them know that help is available because you can't just expect that they'll find you and come to you. The women in this lifestyle are more likely to talk to us than the police because there's actually a greater fear of law enforcement. So. Um, some of that is conditioned by the pimp or the trafficker. Hey, they're just going to lock you up, or if you go to the police, then I'm going to retaliate against you, or they'll never believe you. You're just a hoe or you're just a prostitute. And because prostitution is illegal, most of these women have experienced the reality of being arrested. The really sad cases are the women who've actually been abused by law enforcement. So. A lot of law enforcement are fantastic and they're compassionate and they care about truth and justice, but there are bad apples that um, have purchased the girls while in uniform or they have an agreement with the pimp or the trafficker that they won't arrest his girls as long as he gets free services from them. There was a case in DeKalb County where a patrol officer arrested a woman and said, you can either service me in the back of my car or I'm taking you to jail. So she consented to that well, he was arrested, he was charged with violating his oath as an officer and sexual assault. And the jury said, yes, you violated your oath as an officer, but we don't think he committed sexual assault because she's just a prostitute, basically. We've done over 400 rescues and we've none of our team's ever been hurt before. So we've never had a gun drawn on us. We've never had anybody hit or assaulted or anything else. Um, it, the nature of what we do does have some inherent danger to it. But honestly, again, speaking from our faith perspective, God's really protected us. Having a, um, a strong faith that as we pray, our light, the prayer becomes the light of Christ who goes in and create a path out of nowhere for them. So we have seen how much the power of prayer really it's being answered as the scripture affirms itself. Um, but actually a rescue that I was going on, the guy got on the phone and he was drunk and he said, if you come here for her, then I'm gonna stab you to death when you get here. And he described the knife and everything else. So of course we're thinking, well, we got back on the phone with her because he wasn't harming her. He loved her in his way. And we said, well, for our protection, can we call the police to be there when we pick you up? And she said, if I see a police car, I'll be gone before they knock on the door. When we got there, we're praying, what's the wisest way to do this? How do we encounter her? We got to the hotel. She was standing in the lobby by herself and he had passed out in the room. So she got in the car and left with us and we didn't even have to deal with him. So it wasn't even an issue, but that was the closest call I'd say that we had. Um, but there are cases where we show up to the location she's given us and she's not there and we drive around, we get out of the car, we call out and we can't find her. And that could be because she changed her mind or it could be because some circumstance came up that prevented her from being able to be rescued or leave her situation. Um, we've had cases where a call's been disconnected. So we've been talking, we hear a commotion, maybe you hear a guy yelling in the background and then the phone line goes dead and then you can't get her back on the phone. Um, all different things like that have happened that have prevented us from being able to have every rescue be successful. Our desire with the housing is to provide a place for rest and stability and to help them accomplish the, the personal things that they need to accomplish to get into long-term care. It doesn't matter if you're pregnant or if you've been arrested before, like whatever your circumstances are, you're welcome in our home. And then in that period of time, we'll figure out the next best step with the woman. So, you know, we're helping them to learn to sleep at night 
to begin to be healthy with three meals a day, um, and then also to work on case management. So, you know, it is kind of starting with a clean slate in so many ways, and also because so much has been taken from them. You know, they're coming really with nothing many of the times, both, you know, internally and externally. Some ladies come with a Kroger bag, and that's the only belongings that they have. Um, a lot of the ladies are coming from a place where their ID has been stolen or taken from them so many times. You know, they don't have their birth certificate. They don't have the typical things that we would just take for granted to be able to go and get that replaced. I think that the time that they spend with us is, is never really easy. It's a fight, you know, a day-by-day -day fight, even when they're with us. And it, that, you know, each woman is an individual and has different experiences, but absolutely the addictive behavior is a big struggle for most of them. The day-to-day -day life could involve drug use that is, is happening because some kind of addiction or substance abuse has formed. Sometimes that's forced on them by the trafficker because it keeps them compliant and numb to what's happening. And then sometimes they develop it on their own to cope with and numb themselves out from what they're having to do. So there was a lady that actually her first month in the safe house was my first month with Out of Darkness. She came to us um, just extremely broken and um, she, in her 50s. So very much feeling as though her life had been wasted. You know, she had broken relationships with her children. She had a lot of talents and skills that had been just, you know, for her kind of lost, lost a sense of dream for her life. And um, so she came through our safe houses and was placed in a long-term care program and has now graduated that program and just um, got her, um, her CNA license to do, she has a job, a full-time position, and she's begun to um, reach out to her kids and start to work on just reconciliation with her children. Sometimes family is definitely a challenge if uh, most of the ladies have children. And so if they have any kind of relationship with those children still, when they come to us, I'm sober now, I'm clean for a few days, I wanna reach out to those kids. I, you know, I wanna get back in touch with them, even if it's not the time for that yet. So those are some of the challenges for sure. One of the things too that we've been learning is, you know, with all the questions that they have and all of the anxieties and all of the issues that begin to come up as they're sober and they're starting to think about their life and what they've been through, um, we're helping them to start to learn how to begin processing that. So I will say that the most painful thing is to see that while, while they're going through it, you don't have a remedy that you could just come and inject them with or something. One thing I will say, as you say this, there is a story that, that just comes in mind of a young woman. The abuse was so deep and the, the root of her abuse was so huge that she would relieve it being in the house and as if she was still there. She, she felt trapped in her own mind with those abuse and having to know that the only thing you could do is to be there at that moment you get to realize that the only thing you have left is to pray and to remain there with her and not, it's to not, it's, it's, it's not to cry with her because she wants to know that you're able to handle what she's releasing, but it's to show like that firmness in, inside of you that I can handle what you're going through. It's for, she's a totally different person. She could look back and remember how the, beginning of her journey was tough but today she's living with that peace that she was able to hold on to so but if we don't get the word out there and if we don't tell people what they most likely subject to they will be vulnerable to fall into those things so the first thing is to educate people to care enough to ed educate people think that some of it is changing our mindset as we even see women out on the street or you know as we just how we think about them how we reach out to people around us being aware of what's happening around us as we're walking down the street just just learning what's going on and being aware of, of ways to get involved whether it's volunteering or just how you see these women because I think a lot of times uh, the idea of choice is something that's just a cultural problem that needs to change you know so that people have a desire to 
to see every person as valuable. Every girl is made precious. Like I, I believe every life was created intentionally and God created each girl with a plan for her life. Things can happen to us, tragic things, traumatic things um, that kind of steal our hope and they make us feel like less than who we were created to be. They cause us to have a low view of ourselves and people will come in and speak into that. No matter what's been spoken over you, no matter how you've been treated, know that you're precious, know that you're beautiful, know that you're loved and there is a plan for you. There are people who care about you and you don't need some guy to come in and convince you of that for it to be true. It is true. And just see yourself that way. That's the biggest thing. Just see the value that's in you, the skills, the talents, um, and really look forward to that hope in your life and the things that you can be, the potential that you have. It's like if we want to do it, it's by you guys making action like this, coming and educating yourself from those who are already in the field who have experienced stuff and take it from there and encourage other people who might have gift to even bring it further than where you guys have started it. So I think it will make a huge difference.